Mo job. Mo job. Mo job. Mo job. Mo job. Monday again. Fuck. Back to Volcano High. Spring break went by all too quickly. I'm still tired. It sucks not getting enough rest. There was just way too much to do. I never had a chance for a breather. Like I had never worked. I had never. I had worked like never before. The days were exhausting. The nights were even worse. Now I understand why Dad was such a tired mess after a long day at the repair shop. The bell rings, prompting the Technicolor mess loitering around the stairs to start pouring into the building. Might as well follow them. The morning classes were easy enough to get through on autopilot. The hallways feel familiar. They're a comforting sight. Missing being in school is a new experience. Entering the room, I notice the tired eyes of everyone else drifting around the room. A couple of students chat about what they did. Everything from meeting up and going on a round trip. The plane, the newest gizzard title. <sighs> Fucking gizzard. Getting rid of the PVE. I was looking forward to that shit. It was some casualized MOBA starting the ho starring the hottest IPs. The plebeians harbored shit tastes to no one's surprise. Carl Deuce, Carl Deuce. Is it Carl? How is it spelled? Carl Dusky or Carl Lusky? I don't know. Karluski coughs, coughs to draw attention away from the newest <laughs> champion, Rebalance. Once he has the class's attention, he starts pointing out pages in the textbook to start reading, as, reading from as he draws up a diagram on the board. In terms of... Sure is a class. Most compat... Sure, for sure... Or an average. Yep, definitely one of the classes of all time. Can't focus on anything, Mr. Kolduski says, though. My eyes are... My lids are getting heavy. Shit, where am I? Ugh. So, Skinny, where's your head gone this time? You're even more spaced out than usual, man. How did I make it here without noticing? I don't know, man. That's just the way it is sometimes. Shit, I even picked up lunch. Impressive. Hello. He's left orbit. You know, I was like that once when I spaced out on Carf. I woke up in... Fang punches me on the arm. Yelling out in surprise, I accidentally interrupt Reed's coming monologue with my sudden outcry. Earth to Annan, calling Annan. Please respond, over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. I rub my eyes, trying to regain some sense of consciousness. I'm here. I'm here. Welcome back from your trip. I have missed you. Fang gives me a quick peck on the cheek. <laughs> Trish stares daggers at me. Yet the smooch triumphs. Finally grounded, my heart skips a beat and I can feel myself start to blush. I could get used to this. I've missed her. I didn't really have the time or energy to catch up with her during the week. Even if everything was her idea to begin with. So how was work? I could hardly reach you this week, other than that time you we actually visited. 
Did you save up enough for your video game consoles? <laughs> you seem to be having fun. And man, you need to tell us about it. Your first foray into the life of a proud worker bee. Well, I've got some good stories to share. All of a sudden, I feel myself slowly slipping back into the darkness that had ripped me out of Kolduski's class. So very tired. Ugh. Cafeteria table, apply directly to the forehead. Head on, <laughs> apply to your forehead. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Maybe later. Get yourself together. You must have had something fun happen. I got a little something to wake you up if you need it. It's five hour energy. <laughs> Reed winks. I'm not entirely convinced that I want to try whatever it is he's got in his magic bag. Go ahead, don't leave us hanging. I'm not getting out this out of it this time, am I? No, you're not. Shit mumbling. Alright, I'll start on my first real day, so Okay. <laughs> Starting here at Moe's to get some extra cash was a good idea. <laughs> Even if I dared to fight against it when Fang first asked me to. Especially when she told me that they were short-staffed. However, the promise of e easy money quickly dispelled any doubts I had at first. Now, during spring break was a good time to go at it, otherwise I'd just be at home shitposting anyways. Thankfully, yesterday's introduction to everything had gone well. Mo had been a bit intimidating the last two times I'd been around. But that aura had dissipated yesterday. He's more, of, more like a mix of Samantha and Fang. Mo didn't pat pose veil, veiled threats of practicing golf swings, golf swings, practicing golf swings like Abby and the the latter of everybody part deuce electric bagelu deluxe edition, drug rector's cut, guilty of the year edition, trademark all rights reserved. Unlike a certain unnamed massive pterodactyl, it's a part of our souls. Spider-Man 2 is the heart and soul of video games and cinema. Wait, did I, did I do that? Okay. The re <laughs> no filter over this one. The restaurant is close to empty. Supposedly, it's always like this before the lunch rush. The calm before the storm. Moe's always dropping off a couple of friends at the pier for a boat ride. So he left me to man the reg register. It's pretty sweet that Moe has his own boat. Maybe Fang and I could come along sometime. That would be romantic, right? The bell above the door rings, interrupting my thoughts. I put on a smile, just like I've been practicing in, in the mirror. Ooh, trademark customer service smile. I, I was looking around as dead as any of as my sense of pride. Welcome to Moe's. What, how can we serve you today? Looking up, I see a familiar sight. In walks the purple menace herself, the queen of triggers, and I'm the king of the black people, I guess. <laughs> What's up, my trigger? 
I freeze, it just slipped out of me by instinct. <laughs> Saying trigger in public chat in the hood, hood, hood prank. <laughs> He would be into that type of content back in 2016, now that I think about it. To the entertainment of absolutely nobody. Bringing smiles to nobody worldwide. I freeze. It just slipped out of me by instinct. Hopefully none of the other staff were close enough to hear me and cancel my ass. Polly and Tony should be stalking shells in the back. Hey, what did you just say to me? C could you say it again? It left me kind of hot and bothered. She gives me a look that could kill. Where's that kill? That's... Out walks the purple menace herself. Whew. Oh, there went one. So is this how I get fired? Not even one day at work before I blow it. Well, Trish tries to walk out before being pushed back inside by her siblings as they, too, storm into Moe's. Yeah, bring it back. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> My favorite family. A gaggle of triceratopses. I love them. They're so adorable. A, hur a huddle of curly haired menaces. A horde of kids gone wired, gone wired on sugar and God knows what. Just like posting on an uh, on the Australian cola ranching forum in summer. Uh, summertime isn't real, damn it. This guy would, if there ever was a summer, a summer poster, Annan would be it. I hate the internet. Anyways, this is what I've been training for. Dealing with minorities. Could cut that out. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna cut that out. It feels just like home. All right. <laughs> what an idiot. Oh my god. Oh, oh. Newfound guests. Let me get you a table. I heard them towards a containment table in the corner as to so not to bo bother the other guests too much. Yeah, that's about right. Yep, exactly like home. Handing out menus, bringing out a basket of breadsticks, a, a carof, I've never heard of that word before, a carof of water, and some coloring books and crayons. Don't eat any, okay? Seems like I've managed to calm the horde. God, she's hopped up. <laughs> Trish doesn't even seem too mad that I put a coloring book in front of her, too. <laughs> she just laughed it off. At least she does have a sense of humor about things that aren't slurs. Yeah, this day is going well. I'm on top of the world. You won't be. Nothing can stop me now. As long as their siblings don't burn the place down. Speeding back, I remove the lit candles from the table. Uh, I should do this, since he has the apron on. God, how, I wonder how fun it was messing with the values on there, on the, on the script. <laughs> Getting them to move around like that probably kind of a pain in the ass to be honest it sure is when I do it this music is driving me insane 
Speeding back, I remove the lit candles from the table, giving a half-assed response about making space for the plates. Trish and I share a look, knowingly. She nods, mouthing a thank you. All right, time to take some orders. I grab the small notepad and pen. Oh my god. <laughs> shit man I'm easy to please it gets me every time are you, are you, Tony I can't post peeking my head into the kitchen I find Polly doing a bit of prep work for tonight I got a couple of kids a couple of kids just come in Polly all right I'm a uh, you know what? Okay, you know what? Give me a minute. I don't have uh, have it recording the desktop, so I can't show this. So, and I don't think it'll it'll record the sound of of what I'm playing. So, Sopranos. Pro I just got spoiled on a character named getting killed. The Sopranos greatest scenes. Like Grandma Glaze? Hey, yeah, you bless it, I'll eat it. She's not coming. Who? Grandma just called. Started crying and hung up. She needs a purpose in life. No, your mother is tougher than you think. So what, no fucking ZD now? Hey. hey! The priest spent the night here. What happened? Nothing. Where was Anthony? He was uh, sleeping over at Jason's. The priest spent the night here. Nothing happened. And you're telling me this because? You might hear something. Take it the wrong way. His car was out front all night. You know what? This is too fucked up for me even to think about. Uh. Fucking idiots, huh? Where do you get him? He's on trees, sweeping the cheese. I'm trying to get the... Leave the fucking cheese there, all right? I love fucking cheese at my feet. I stick motherfucking provolone in my socks at night. So... He sticks provolone in his socks at night, I guess. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? They smell like your sister's crotch in the morning. Smells like your right? sister's crotch. So leave the in fucking cock sucking cheese where it is. Here, here, here. Go ahead. Have a good time. Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? I feel your anger. Who the fuck are you talking to? Charles. Yes, yes, you have a son. You're with your son? The fuck? I don't got no kids. <gasps> oh, oh, Sonny. Pagano? Kind spirit. Is your name Sonny? Charles Pagano. How the fuck do you know that? He says he... <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck? I have a couple, like, season DVDs that I found. Thrift stores. I... <laughs> so I should probably watch that. <laughs> I've been meaning to. All right, I'm going to get some french fries. I'm going to get started on some french fries. I, I haven't taken their orders yet. I'll be right on out to get them. Don't you worry too much. They'll always be french fries. The lifeblood of them kids. I swear, they're potato-powered engines of destruction. Now get... I need to know what else they want. I'll be right back then. Leaving the kitchen, I see they've started drawing in silence. Bait taken. The only thing audible is the slow, moody jazz playing. Well, is that what this is? I swear, every restaurant is part of the cartel that's of a cartel that's distributing the same CD. Moving with grace, I maneuver my way out to their table. All right, can I take your orders? We'll be having, we'll be having the fried chicken with fries, foo. 
Of course you will. What do you mean by that, with that, Skinny? I mean, of course, so I'll fix it. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, of course, so I'll fix it. Bad what I'll... What? It's... It's Bolognese, Tana. What? Bolognese... No. Bolognial... What? How... I don't know. It's Bolo... It's Bolognese, Tanya. Make it veggie, too. Wait, what is he having? Wait. Fratch. <laughs> Wait, they're Triceratops. Wouldn't they be... Be... I don't know. I don't think they would be omnivores about that. Uh, whatever. Make it veggie, too. Bologna, Bologna, the baloney man. One balloones. What? What are we talking about? Blog. I'll just say Bologna from now on. Bologna. That one. S say it. I want you to confirm our order. Wait, what? What are we talking about? Bolognese. Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> Bolognese. Oh no. Why did you. No. No, don't have your little sister say that. Set up a joke like that. No. Don't do that. <laughs> Why? Well, I don't want to say something like that in front of a bunch of children. But I will anyways. Bologna's. That one? Say it. Wait a minute. Bolog guys aisle. What? It's Bologna's Tana. Make it veggie too. Bologna's. One balloonace. Bologna's. Bologna. Uh, Bologna's. Uh. <laughs> Am I stupid? Am I dumb? Bolognese. Okay, now I get it. How you're trying to type this out. It, all of this was too much information and it left me scattered. It left me wanting. That one. See it. I want you to confirm our order. Trisha's smug stare locks me in place. Swip drops it down my forehead. Knees weak. Mince and spaghetti. Ballard knives. So close. I'm sorry. I'm doing motions that you can't see. I'm sorry. A what? Dangerously smug. Dangerously cheesy. And I see the sweat dribbles on his face. I want a Herbie cheeseburger. Big one. Well, I, okay, I guess it... I guess it would be beyond chicken or something like that. <laughs> beyond fried chicken. <laughs> okay, now I get it. I... Uh, I want a Herbie cheeseburger. Big one. No tomato. No tomato. They're gross. Hmm. Tomatoes are good, though, when they're not... When they're not all... Not all gooey. 
Got it. No gross tomatoes for you. I also want a burger, but I'm a big girl, so I want everything. Oh my god. The kids start speaking over each other, fighting to establish dominance. David Attenborough <laughs> would have a field day. As you can see, the Triceratops family are <laughs> I don't know what to... I would kind of joke to come up with for that. Well, you did it for me, never mind. The savage Triceratops is in their natural environment, usually stay in packs. But deviations happen with a fight within their own group to establish dominance. These two young specimens are vying for control by resorting to violence. Such is their nature. Oh, really? Stop zoning out and mumbling, creep. Oh my, I am, I am a man with no plans. Chandra said that she wants a Caesar salad. Uh-huh, got it. And you? Do you serve pizzas for lunch? Yeah, the oven's good. Then I want a vetter. Ev ev whatever the hell that is. Jotting it down, I realize I haven't taken drinks. Uh, what do you want for drinks? Cokes all around, thanks. Is Pepsi okay? The query strikes a spark. This is my moment. This is my plan. My time in the sun. I'm sorry. We don't have Coke. Is Pepsi fine? Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck? A cacophony of moans and complaints arise from the brood. This is... Oh, she's puffing at her cheeks. That's so adorable. I remember watching Dinosaur. I, at at the that same uncle's house, and there was it was in the kitchen, and there was like just one of those tiny little TVs, those really teeny tiny ones, on the kitchen counter. And that's where I saw at least part of the movie. I also played the PS1 game once when I was little. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to, what to do in that game, I don't think. Pepsi is the exact same fucking thing, okay? I don't know what the fuck is wrong with y'all. It's a beautiful melody in my head. Yeah, yeah, they'll be fine. Scurrying away before they change their minds, I head back to the kitchen. Barely dodging a throne cry, Gran, whizzing past my head. So, hey, Annam, was I right or not? Your look tells me all I need to know. Buggers and fries, already on the way. What else? Handing him the ticket, he starts zooming around the kitchen at breakneck speeds. It's impressive how well he handles everything in his old age. The acrobatic feats required to reach the uppermost shelf would put most gymnasts to shame. The doorbell rings, signaling another customer entering. Got to go. Better not keep him waiting. Then I, uh, I had to take a phone call. That's anti-climatic. Climatic. Strange, I don't remember your phone ringing. The pennant stare threatens to tear me apart. I mean, I, I had to make a phone call to, to Mo about the current situation in Mineria. Marinara. Marinara is not a place, Annan. 
All right, here's what actually happened. I found myself in the freezer, sitting on an oddly shaped black garbage bag that was lying on the floor. Oh dear. Tony put me in here to help me recover a bit. I've been sitting here for a while, so the cold is starting to get to me. Then, po then Mo peeks his head in through the door. Annie, my boy, why are you hiding out in the freezer? It's a, it's a comfy, cool place. I heard from Tone that you've been doing well, but I have, well, but that you ran from the lunch rush. I mean, sort of. So, yes. If you can't handle the heat, there ain't no shame in it. But I've got other spots to put you in. No, it's... You don't understand. So, how about you tell me? Okay, so... In comes this girl. She, she comes in to order lunch, okay? Mm-hmm. She's got huge boobies. They make me drool. I mean, some serious honkerinos. Absolute slappers. A real set of potatoes. What the f- Packing some <laughs> Packing some, some double honkaroos. Massive. <laughs> the dabarulis. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> I don't want to say any of these words. They're hurtful to women everywhere. Big old ton hungaroo cougars. So she orders lunch, and I take her order. Like a pro, my boy. Then her mom shows up, and they're even more massive. With even, with even bigger buckle crugs. <laughs> what the fuck? Humongous. Massive, even. And 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 Jesus, you're, you're breaking the text box. So that's why you zoned out. Also, to clear up your story, you missed a detail. You didn't even take their orders. You just stood there staring at them. Tony had to drag you away to the back rooms and take over at the counter. Fang hits you in the back of the head with what feels like the extended version of Algebra 3. Oh, oh fuck! Don't go oogling other girls, dweeb. I might. And I will. I can, and I will. Nobody can stop me. Fang raises the punitory textbook once more. <coughs> Understood. But girls... You know what I mean, dweeb. Well, that was a woman. What was that about a black garbage bag? Uh, the bag? Probably just some fresh produce. Tony brings in those deliveries all the time. Oh, oh yeah, do you all want to join in, join up for the open mic night at Moe's this weekend? The gang looks at each other, locking eyes for just a short moment before they nod in agreement. Radical, I'm always up for showing up off our newest masterpieces. Like gym teacher sex dream. Seriously, what was she thinking about at such a time? <laughs> Well, we need some new material, too. Let's get to work on putting together something during lunch tomorrow. Sounds good. It's settled. Well, that's about time to head off. 
Not to be a stickler, but I actually enjoy Jingo's class. We put, put away our trays as the gang starts juggling ideas for a new song, before shuffling off to music class. I can feel my eyes growing tired once more. Being up and moving helps keep me awake, Hitch. It sure does. <sighs> Only barely, though. Jingo hands us a worksheet and leaves us to pair up. Reed heads off to just barely finish it so he can work on the first draft of their new song. Fang feels some pity for my broken down body and sticks by my side. Or maybe she's just feeling guilty for setting me up with Mo. A few more minutes of shut eye while Fang takes care of our worksheets would be nice. <coughs> nuh -uh, you're not sleeping your way through this shit. Okay, let's let's get down to business then. Actually, looking at the sheet, I start to realize Mozart really is a. F okay, but are you Mozart? But but is Mozart still alive? Hmm. Does he live? The class goes by quickly, and afterwards, on our walk to the bus stop, Fang juggles some ideas for how to kickstart their performance with me. I try my best to give some advice. It mostly falls flat, but she politely nods and still entertains my ideas. We hug farewell at the bus stop before Fang runs off towards the nays car, and I get on the bus. I fall asleep as soon as I come home. Uh, my alarm pulls me back to the mortal coil. Holy shit, I've been out for 12 hours. I feel reborn. I've got a couple of mixed missed texts from Fang, so I send back and I send back and I'm alive, fell asleep when I got home. Shower, breakfast, clothes, shoes, and self-defense utensil. Then I walk back to the bus stop. Halfway through homeroom, I get a text from Fang. Hey, cue ball. Hey, feather brain. Want to meet on the roof during recess? Sure. The roof is empty, save for us. Some cigarette butts from the last people that were up here playing hooky are letting off a faint smell of cheap tobacco and tar. The light breeze and distant sounds of students loitering about in the school's green areas are a nice backdrop. Fang and I finally finding a small window to spend some time away from the rest of the band is nice. Fang pulls out her pack of cigarettes, flicking it to shake out two cigarettes and one with smooth motion. With one in smooth motion, she nabs one with her snoot and <clears throat> reaches over the pack and reaches over the pack to me so I can grab the other one. Oh wait, you had that trashy vape now, didn't you? The pack stops halfway. The outreached cigarette slowly retreats back into the safety of its brethren. No, I quit. Huh, you had that thing for a few days and already quit. I told you so. <laughs> okay, I guess he vapes now. Why not? Stop, stop buying cheap shit from Z Express. <laughs> eh, Mo, Mo helped too. You can't take all the credit. Reaching out for the sig before it disappears in the crowd, I find it snatched away by Fang once more, right as my fingers are about to grasp it. Nah, so what happened? I sigh. Are you going to be like this today? Like what? A mischievous grin was spreading out over her face. Like this. 
I have no idea what you're talking about. Now what happened to your super cool and healthy little gadget? <laughs> well, it was a normal night, right after closing. Another great shift done, kid. Thanks, boss. You really started to shape into something. I'm proud of you. It's weird to hear it out loud. When was the last time someone told me that they were proud of me? That was a long time ago. I'm sorry you've not been getting enough care, kid. Just remember, you're always welcome here now. Damn this mumbling. Uncle Moe's gonna be... Uncle Moe's gonna be here. Now, time for a smoke break. A smoke break? I already took a vape earlier. No, no, no. Proper smoke break. None of those fancy ma machines you kids are using nowadays. You done good. So a little celebration is due. Mo insists that we head into his office for a little bit of rest and recreation. Not that that not that I can really do anything to resist. The man is at least four times as big as me. <laughs> the room is large, but with all the stuff crammed in here there, it can barely fit the two of us. A faint smell of cigar smoke and old books hang over us like the ghosts of bosses pass. Wooden blinds cover the windows to the backyard, and portraits of pinstripe suit-wearing patriarchs from throughout the ages stare down at us. Mo offers me to have a seat in one of the huge leather armchairs, as he opens a cabinet and pulls out a bat bottle of amber liquid and a pair of cigars. He pours it up in two matching glasses and sets them down in front of us. Then he drops down into the armchair opposite to mine. He then proceeds to use a knife. He see, to use a knife. He seems to pull out of nowhere to cut the tips off the cigars. He puts one of the cigars into his mouth and pulls out a Zippo from his pocket, flicks it with a click, and lights it. <laughs> Somehow, taking a deep drag and savoring the taste, he then lets out a puff of smoke that almost clouds the entire room. I pull out my pink bootleg ice <laughs> vape pen, aiming to follow suit. Uh, cotton candy. Ew. Ew. Mo shakes his head disapprovingly as he takes sees me taking it out. Kid, you better not think of using that bubblegum flavored abomination in this here office. You'd be disrespecting my ancestors. Sorry, boss. <laughs> what the fuck? Actually, that thing ain't good for you, anywho, with all them dare fake oils and cheap synthetics. Lightning fast, he snatches it from my hand and shreds it with his teeth before letting it fall into a garbage can by his desk. That's cool, only a must earnings from scammy people in. Root run escape has gone in an instant. How the... Wait. Wait, what? How... How do you... Do you have... Are you, are you pretending to be a girl and are you linking a PayPal account or something in order to... Is Because that, that's the only way that would make sense. It only hurts a little. Mo picks up the other cigar, reaching it out toward me. There you go. <laughs> Why you gotta call me such bad words? I don't care for it. Actually, that's a cigar, I think. I know it's a cigar. I'm calling you. Well kind of hurtful when it happens to me. Now take it, light it up, pull a puff into your mouth, let it simmer, then breathe it out. None of that deep into your lungs kit your kids be doing nowadays. Ruining your bodies is all that will do. 
Mo takes up his glass, curses, then calls out for Tony. A few drags later, the familiar face appears at the door. <laughs> hey, Tony. I need you to ask... Wait. Hey, Tony. I need you to ask Ann in here. Tony starts to move his hand over to, to the back of his pants, reaching for something in it as his eyes darken. I forgot to ask for the whiskey. It's been a long day. Tony abandons his previous action and returns to his normal, cheerful expression. Right on it, boss. <laughs> right on it, boss. I don't know how to... <laughs> Jesus. As Tony shuffles away, Mo turns to me once more. So, how's your whole thing with Lucy going? You two getting along well? Picture it. 1950s. Sicily. Were we? It, it felt right, yet. I'm not used to this stuff. Relationships. I don't really like her. Uh, them. Yeah, Lucy's a good lass. As kind as they come. Mo takes a deep swig of whiskey, then stares out into the ether. Don't squander it, kid. They say it's better to love and lose than to never love at all. But losing love when you couldn't hold on, that leaves a bad taste in your mouth. He takes it, he drinks deep once more. So you better push yourself and be your best self, you hear? What does it even mean? Uh, I mean, boss? It means you've only got a few months left of being kids and they're in, the, in your fancy high school before you cast out into the real world. You can't expect to be all grown up from graduating. It's a process. He stops, seemingly thinking deeply about something. Tony shows up at the door. Not walks up to it. One second the doorway is empty and the next he's there. Got you covered, boss. He comes in with an ice tray and a pair of tongs, drops two ice cubes in each of our glasses, and leaves as quickly as he came. He must have really practiced the art of being quick and silent, despite the, his stature. I never knew being a waiter required such skills. Now that the whiskey is properly served, I take a sip. The strong, biting taste immediately reminds me of the time I accidentally sipped on my dad's glass way back when. But I stomach it, letting it swirl around in my mouth as it intermingles with the remaining flavor of the cigar. Mm, yeah. So, how you like it? I cough to clear my throat, eliciting a smile from Mo. After the initial shock, it's quite nice. Uh, puts hair on your chest, that's for sure. Then we talk, talk, then we talk some about the business and how to handle it. He tells me a lot about neckties and and their intimidating effects for some reason, which is a bit odd since I've never seen him wear any. Soon enough, we're approaching our third refill of whiskey. So, kid, how are you handling yourself? What could have possibly happened to make you move all the way out here for the last semester? I don't really want to get into it. Got some baggage, eh? Well, as I told you, Uncle Mo's going to be here for you. Everything you tell me will stay between the two of us. Not even a word to, you know. Mo sighs, drooping down into his chair a bit. You can't keep secrets from the one you love, you know. Being honest and upfront is how you build one, up one of the more proper relationships. <laughs> I never said I loved Fang, but... It felt right somehow. Might be the whiskey, might be the talk of relationships and futures... Or it might be more. 
This was probably the closest thing to love I've ever felt for someone 3D. I'll tell her someday. Don't let it linger for too long, you hear, kid? Yes, boss. That's my boy. Now tell Uncle Moe what's been bothering you. The whiskey loosens my lips, and I end up telling him about everything. In between being an inebriated slurring and expecting some Korean, Korean cooking for him lingo. Oh. Mo nods, taking it in, interjecting with a few comments every now and again. Oddly enough, I don't feel judged for being a fucking weirdo. It's comforting to let it all out to someone, even if it's my boss. After that, I don't remember much except for what waking up on, on a couch in the back rooms with a headache, tucked under a well-worn blanket. I'm glad Moe's taken a liking to you. He's a great man. Now, what was that about feeling something for someone 3D? My alarms go off. I'm getting dangerously cheesy. Dangerously close to revealing my power level. It just means that I, uh... Come on, think, think, think. Come on, come on now, brain. Work with me for once. It just means I really like you. She looks a little bit flustered. Yet she doesn't look disgusted or angered, only happy. This is the time. I take a deep breath, pushing away my fears. This is as good as time as any to say it. Mo is giving me the courage. Now it's up to me. I love you, Fang. Please stay by my side. These last few months have been some of the best of my life, even with all their ups and downs. My heart drums about as hard as a coal filling spirit solo. <laughs> coal filling <laughs> solo. You'll be in my heart. You'll be in my heart. Now and forevermore. Raptor Jesus, what if she doesn't feel the same? I love you too, dweeb. But if you tell anyone that I told you that I that then I will end you. She snuggles up against my shoulder, taking another deep drag as she drapes her wing around me. I was wondering when you were going to say it. You were waiting for it? <laughs> Laughing it off, she looks up at me smiling while holding on to my arm. I hope things will keep on keeping on. We stand there in silence for a while, enjoying our quiet time together. I feel safe next to her. We extinguish our cigarettes and start to head back to our classes, bidding adieu with the premise that we, the premise that we've been, that we'd spend lunch in the auditorium, so that the band could work on something for the open mic night. Soon enough, I'm walking through the hallways towards the auditorium with my chicken and curry baguette. I feel a lot less sluggish today. I might even be on my way to recovering. My entire everything still feels sore, but at least I can keep my eyelids open. The band's already started practicing. Fang waves at me as I enter. Reed looks up, locking eyes with me. Hey, So, dude, what do you think of this? I guess. It's very interesting. 
you're sure to captivate your audience. That tells you our audience would love it. I'm fairly sure that's not wasn't what Anon said. So hey, you look less like a zombie today. How's your gummy vitamin and microwave di dinner diet going? Are you getting your daily dose? You know it, babe. You know it. There's more of those gifts, by the way. J just so you know. There's more. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. I'm taking care of myself. Are you looking forward to the open mic thing? Open mic night. Yeah, we're, we're starting to nail our opening act. I can hear that. Reed's getting really creative. And eh, Trish will rein him in. Raptor Jesus in heaven, you're, you're murderizing that intro. Let it rest in peace and let's move on. Dude, please, let me practice my art. It's not art. It's manslaughter. Put down those drumsticks, Reed. We, let's have a short break. Thanks for the feedback, my man. So what do you think so what do you think we can improve? We got a bit of an impasse here. I think we can finish up our lunch and not bother Annan. Nah, the dude's a cool caper. He'll just tell if this is he'll just tell us if his brain can't handle all of this no, mojo. That uh, sounds Trish looks over to me, raising an eyebrow. And like you've got a bit of work left to do, but it's got potential. Maybe go easier on the drums. Trish draws a sigh of relief before perking up and changing the subject. By the way, you didn't finish up yesterday. How'd the rest of your week at Moe's go? Oh yeah, regale us with your thrilling tales. I could use a short break. Us artists can't hog the spotlight all the time, right? You need a breather so you can do a fresh take, for sure. Fuck me. Well then. So, picking up where we left off, the Wednesday. Tonight's the night. Fang and her family are coming to the restaurant tonight. Meanwhile, I'm busy sweating bullets while desperately trying to hold on to my last strands of sanity. Ripley is going to tear me to shreds if I so much as slip up for a millisecond. Hopefully, Mo will be able to handle him. <laughs> It'll be a kaiju fight for the ages. The other tables have gone well so far. A lot better since the, that time the two ladies came in. <laughs> you could hear a thud behind the counter. I shudder at the prospect of spurging at as bad as that time ever again. Then my phone buzzes. Hey! We'll be there in like five minutes. Alright. Alright, Dad, please. Don't embarrass me in there. Be kind to him. I'll treat him like he deserves to be treated. Now, dear, be nice and don't make a scene. The hulking mass of an overprotective father grunts disapprovingly. A quick glance from his wife makes him soften up, though. All right, all right. For the sake of keeping the peace at Moe's. The saccharine sweet sweetheart tugs at her husband's shirt a bit so that he lowers his head and gives him a peck on the cheek. Oh, God. Ah. Thank you, dear. A high-speed camera might have spotted a tiny smile and a slight blush, but it's invisible to the naked eye. <laughs> I can see that the errands have gathered outside. Fang and her parents seem to have to be having some sort of argument. Meanwhile, Nazar seems to do his best to stay out of it as he stares at his phone. Smart move. Hey boss, the errands have arrived. 
A muffled voice coming from the back rooms responds. I give him a warm welcome. Bring up the unlimited breadsticks and fancy water. Ah, the one from the from the plastic bottles, not from the tap. Got it, boss. The doorbell rings as Fang pushes open the door and pushes open the door and enters, bringing her family along behind her. Welcome to Moe's. How can I serve you this evening? Stifling a chuckle, Fang responds in a similar manner. We'd like a table for four. We called and set up a reservation earlier with a moose. Certainly. Right this way. The restaurant is packed tonight since the retirement home's annual bulls convention just started. Yet a small sign with reserved had kept the best table free. Moe had taken some old folks to the back rooms to talk about it when they just ignored the sign and sat down. <laughs> oh my god. Those, those, those poor geriatrics. After that, we've had no issues. Seeing, seeing them to the table, I pull out their chairs. They grab their seats and I, as I scurry off to fetch the breadsticks and fancy water. Uh, but breadsticks. <laughs> Don't drop those pizzas. Fancy just meant that we had to actually had we had actually cooled it instead of taking it directly from the tap. I pass Mo in the hall as I go to fetch everything. You're doing well, kid. I'm heading out to greet a guest. Come grab a seat when things have cooled down a bit. Don't it can hold the fork for a while. Sure, boss. Thanks, boss. Hey, Tone. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, Tony. Uh, Mo said that I could go grab a seat with Fang and her family for a while. You fine holding the fort? Ah, hey, kid. Take it easy. I'll call for you when I need you. Thanks. Tony gives me a pat on the back as he nods and sends me off. Picking up the basket of ap appetizers from for the and the car cofefe, I <laughs> I head back out. With with every fossil from the retirement home having already. <laughs> That's kind of funny. With every fossil from the retirement home having already been served, I've got a window to just spend some time with Fang and her family. Approaching the table, I manage to listen in on the end of their conversation. He's a good lad, working hard. He'll take good care of you. You don't need to be so hard on him. He needs to learn how to be a man. Times are different now. You don't need to be forged in fire like we's got. Got him some slack. He'll grow into it. As I come closer, Mo turns around. And on, grab a seat. We've just been talking about you. Mo pulls out a vacant chair from a nearby table, ne nearly scaring the elderly occupants into choking on their spaghetti, then places it in front of me. <laughs> what? Putting down the breadsticks and cafefe, I grab a seat. <laughs> yes, I know I'm spilling. I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> in case, it, in case it flew over your head. So, so, Annan, how are you liking it here so far? Uncle Mo's great to have around, right? You're flattering me. <laughs> he opened his mouth. He's really been helping me through things. I never thought I could fit into a wagey laugh. Wagey? This was a bearable existence. I'm having fun. It's been great. Exhausting, but great. My daughter's boyfriend, a waiter. How great. I can't wait to see your future plans. Uh, gripping his glass with his massive fist... I can hear the tension as it starts to crack, while he stares at my neck with malicious intent. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. Thankfully, Mo puts a hand on this, pushing the glass back down to the table as Ripley loosens his grip. It's a good job, Rip. Don't be so hard on him. And we've all put down our time. The kid's got loads of life left to figure it out. I think you're doing great. Seeing you not completely spurging out is a nice change. Mo laughs a hearty laugh, slapping me on the shoulder. If it wasn't for the fact that I was used to it, and was bracing myself, I'd be sprawled out over the table, face down and covered in breadsticks, and slug slime. <laughs> See, Uncle Mo knows how to beat some sense into him. One of these days, you might get one of these on your own. Mo points to his hat. Both he and the gang have all got identical ones. Was it some sort of rite of passage to get your own gooner hat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, odd uh, boss. I'm looking forward to it. I'll do my best, boss. Where did you pick? Where did you pick up something like that? It's all part of the work, Lucy. All a part of being on your seer team. Lord have mercy. Eh, forget about it. Don't you worry too much, little Lucy. I'll take good care of your boyfriend. Ew, his eyes. Oh. Fang turns away with an embarrassed look on her face, muttering something inaudible. So what are your actual plans after for after graduation? Oh, plans, huh? Everyone stops to look at me. Time slows to a crawl. Their, their expectations are enormous. My heart is put on the scale for judgment. Shitposting and drifting around in society without drawing attention to myself wouldn't cut it as an answer. Is this still what I want to do with my life? Of course not. Of course you need to change. Meeting the gang, getting to know them, being part of something. Finding Fang. It's been changing me into something new. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. But I like doing this. Mo looks at me with a glint in his eye. I'm good at this. That's... Ripley looks scrutinizingly at me, but Samantha gives him a, hard, a stern glance, making him ease off for the moment. A good answer. You've grown up more than I thought. Ripley puts a hand on my shoulder reassuringly. Though his forced smile tells me that there's a risk that he would collapse my upper torso with just one hand, had Samantha and Mo not been there, been here. Uh, what did I tell you, Rip? Mo once again pulls Ripley off me. Give the kid some slack. All of us. All of a sudden, Mo, Mo's got sharpness in his eyes that I haven't seen before. Ripley shrinks, rests his arm on the table, and returns to looking at the menu. The small talk resumes, I get back into talking with Fang, and nays her about what they had been up to, while Mo chats up Samantha. Ripley sits in silence for a while, before he too returns to talking to Mo, as if I'm not even here. Fang tells me that she's been relaxing and writing songs, as Reed and Trish were so busy that they haven't really been hanging out all together. Nazer's been working on his ride. He had ordered some parts by mail that Ripley helped him install. Wow. The evening passes and all too soon, Tony comes asking for me to aid him with the bills and cleaning off the tables. So Mo shoots me off. Fang shoots me a thumbs up and a wink. Go get him. Bada bing. Bada boom. Fang's smile quickly fades as her eyes narrow, and I walk away chuckling. 
Cleanup is routine by now. Helping the fossils with the checks doesn't take much time at all. Bringing the dishes out to the kitchen where Polly's loading the dishwasher goes quick quickly. Mo calls me back out to the restaurant. The errands are just about to leave. We say our goodbyes. Then Fang leans in for a quick kiss. A stern glare from Ripley makes me lean out. Perfect for dodging it. <laughs> Not even a kiss -oo. Come on. Uh, the slow motion boost I get, 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 gives me time to run into the kitchen before he can get his hands on me. Swoosing past, past Tony, dragging a heavy bundle through the hall, I meet Polly in the kitchen and help him finish up, up the last dishes. Mo is out in the restaurant, eyeing through the bills and counting the register. Hey, kid, come out of the kitchen and I'll show you a thing or two. I'm away, boss. Hanging up my apron on the hook by the swinging doors, I come back out into the restaurant. Yeah, let me show you how to finish up in the day. Mo starts going th through how we do it. How we count the bills, how to reset the register, how we add some extra orders in case we missed any, and how to refill the roll of paper for the receipts. I'm going to have to ask you for a favor. Could you work some overtime tomorrow? Sure, boss. Well, he's going to have to go visit an old friend, and I'm unsure if he'll be home in time. By the way, Mr. Moose, how about another sit-down tonight? I think you's in needs of hearing a little something, you dig? I think that I might have to head home and sleep. Most stern look tells me that this wasn't just an invitation. Sleep can wait. I'd love to stay a while. Adams, that's my boy, right here. <laughs> Finishing up the rest and saying goodnight to Tony and Polly as they leave, we head into the office once again. Same chairs, the same whiskey, and the same brand of cigars. I'm a bit worried about what would happen if I'd pull out a cigarette at this point, and I have no intention of finding out. So, my boy, I see you's worried about another, about a big daddy rip there, ain't you? No need to answer. I know he's a bit terrifying. Always trying to put up a facade of being a real hard-boiled type. He's just protective of his little girl. You should have seen how he treated Trish when she started to, to, to put all them their bad thoughts into poor Lucy's head. Anyway, what's this? Get to know him. Show him you's a proper man, ready to care for his little girl. Ain't you just not there to get get a piece of that patera? Well, you know. Of that I am very well aware. All of a sudden, the room feels very hot. Arms are weak, palms are sweaty. I'm rattling my glass so that the ice cubes are clattering against the edges. <laughs> my boy, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Just you gotta show them the man's your. You gotta show them you mean more than that, too. You gotta show you'll take care of his baby. Put in your best side. Taking a drag of the cigar, I feel the whiskey start to cool my nerves a bit. I could handle this. Show Mo that I'm serious. I wanna put in my best side for Ripley's baby girl. I want to... I best want to put a baby in his girl. Are you fucking sorry? At this point, it's not a slip. It's a fruity and fall into the Grand Canyon. Mo almost swallows his cigar. Mo almost swallows his cigar in surprise. I mean that I'll take care of her, and I'll take care of his baby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm, -hmm. mm. <laughs> then, then he cracks up and starts laughing heartily. 
And then, my lad, you need to work on them phrasings of yours. Mo reaches over, punching my shoulder, to which I brace myself just enough to not have me on the chair go careening off into the distance. Yet the whiskey doesn't dull my senses enough to make up for the pain. <clears throat> Choking back tears, I try to sit and sit still. Ah, no need to get teary-eyed, kid. Don't be so uptight. No need to worry about it too much. Suddenly looking serious, he looks at me with a cold, calculating stare. And if you ever get in trouble, know that Uncle Moe's right there for you. Leaning back, he returns to his normal, che cheerful mannerism. Some advice. See if you can go out bowling or fishing. Old Rip loves to get out and do something physical. Between you and me, he loves... He brags loads about them there golf swings of his. But the man could never finish below par for as long as i would known him. So I should, I should go bowling with him, cousin? Ain't that a great idea? Show him your mean business. That you want to give him your all. Put your best foot forward. If it comes to that, Uncle Moe's gonna, gonna join you twice. Looking down at my glass and at the half-smoked cigar in my hand, I feel odd. It feels odd to have someone care for me like this. You gotta stop that mumbling, kid. And don't you worry too much about it. You've been acting for you've been aching for a good father figure, and no one's better than me at whipping some shape into kids like you. Thanks, boss. For this once, you can call me Uncle Kids. Thanks, Uncle Mo. Yes, very welcome, kid. Now smoke up, finish that glass of yours, and we'll close up and head home. I finished the glass, letting the alcohol dull my worries. The last inch of the stoogie tastes great as it mixes with the remaining flavor of the whiskey that's still lingering about. I've grown fond of these. It's gonna be an ex it's gonna be an expensive habit if I, if I keep it up. We pack up and head out, locking the door behind us. Mo gives me a hug before I walk walk off towards the bus stop. After that, it's it's a blur. All of a sudden, I'm just I'm just at home. My bed welcomes me with open arms. I wake up the following morning with the sun sh when the sun shines thin through my blinds, stabbing me in my sore eyes. I curse and look at my phone, but it's dead. I forgot to plug it in when I got home. In cold sweat, I put it on charge as I rush to put my clothes back on and toast a slice of bread. <laughs> I run out of my apartment building build, apartment building with a slice of toast in my mouth, like a schoolgirl running late to class. Being late to work it in my first week would me make a terrible impression. Thankfully, I make it with a few minutes to spare. It turns out to be a busy day today. I barely have time to clean the tables before the next seat of guests arrive. I, I've just finished. I've just gotten finished wiping off one of the larger tables when I hear Mo call for me. Hey, kid, you's running behind. Uh, go take the tw table twelve's order. I'll get. I'll get Tony. I'll get Tone on table cleaning duty. Okay, boss, you got it, boss. You never really expect things to happen, but then they do happen. Have you ever seen the the finale of the show? It's fucked up, man. TV is a weird thing sometimes. A family of dinos are sitting down at table 12. The father and mother are trying to wrangle their unruly teenage son with their clearly mentally challenged daughter. 
while their clearly mentally challenged daughter is chewing on some crayons. She's probably got a bright future ahead of herself in the Marines. Hello, welcome to Moe's. Sorry for the, uh, uh, wait. What can I get you to drink? I, I, all I've seen was, like, just a video that showed, like, the, the last few minutes of this show, so I don't even remember what they sound like. So I'll just, I don't know, I'll do my best. I'll have a Coke. Me too. I'll have water and she'll have lemonade. Sorry, we don't... Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Sorry, we don't have water. Is Coke okay? I mean, we don't have Pepsi. Is water okay? <laughs> I take a deep what I feel like sometimes. I take a deep breath, inhaling to do a quick factory reset. <laughs> we don't have Coke. Is Pepsi okay? Oh, Yeah, that's fine. By chance, can we put our order in now? I think we know what we want. Uh, yeah, sure, what do you have? I don't feel like looking up clips of this show right now. Even though it's uh, the most simple process in the world. What do you have? I'll have a personal pepperoni pizza. Honey, what would you like? I'll take the eggplant parmesan, I think. Eggplant Parmesan. And for you, sir? I'll have the three cheese pien. And she'll have the kids burger. Uh, oh. But can we have no tomatoes on that? Sir, there, there has to be tomatoes in the sauce. There's no way I can remove tomatoes from the sauce. No, on a burger. You fucking dingling. No tomatoes. Yes, no tomatoes, please. Okay. No tomato but for the potato. No. No. We're not counting to potato. It's 2023. We no longer count to potato. We appreciate all walks of life. No matter where they're from. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh God, please no. No. I'm sorry, what was that? What was that? What you just said? What I say what? How did you know that's her nickname? Uh, 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 what? I look over to the teenager sitting ever so collected. A drop of sweat rolls <laughs> quickly down his cheek, revealing otherwise. What? Wait, what? Yes, that's Dolph's little nickname he gives her. Isn't that right, Dolphy? At the mere mention of his name, he snaps to attention. And her eyes lock. A moment of solidarity between two strangers who, in a moment, stand together as brothers. <laughs> Woo! We're, we're linking up. We don't need no, no cables to... <laughs> Never mind. That's a shit-ass joke. 
uh, brothers together in arms, who if one falls, so shall the other. Together we're invincible. It's a common, uh, it's a common name from my, uh, home country of, uh, of, of Italy. Picture it. In 2003, Sicily. Bullet dodged. Well done, Ghost Rider. Italy, huh? Can't we have, can't say we have ever heard of an Italy. Where's that located? I don't know my own geography, so I couldn't point to it. Play it cool. Use that solid D plus grade in geography. Uh, Southern Europe? Oh, Veritas. Like it's uh, east of Spain, I think. Don't overdo it. Spain? Well, I mean, Mexicans speak Spanish. But there's no Spain. It's just a language. What the fuck? No, I believe Spain is an actual country. You need to keep course, Mr. Moose. Land this sucker down. Right next to uh, Atlantis. And you crashed it, dumbass. Dad, man, I'm hungry. Save through teamwork. Mistakes and miracles. You call the kid a retard. Annan? What the fuck is wrong with you? It, you think Carf is a hell of a drug. <laughs> no, I didn't. I called her a potato. It's completely different. That's not any better. The vegetables are considerably better than retards. Uh, uh, wait. Oh yeah, that one time.